difference One cup at a time So be sure to grab your tea Grab a seat And tune in to Miss Liz Tea time Making a difference One cup at a time Well, welcome to Tea Time. That's right, Miss Liz is back. And you know what that means. We're spilling some storytelling and some words. We don't serve a beverage in this house, but you can drink the tea because Miss Liz is drinking her tea as well. We really encourage everybody to tune in and check out all of these incredible tea times for the last five seasons. That's right, five years of incredible guests with over 300 guests and over 67 different countries and over 105 different topics. But today we have a returning guest and you know how Miss Liz loves returning guests because the ice is already broken, right? So that's why we're a little, a few minutes a little behind today to start because we were talking in the background and we were talking about some really incredible stuff. Um, we're gonna keep talking about those incredible things today with Laura but before we get you started with the tea today of transformational empowerment and activation we're going to get you over to miss liz's youtube channel and we're going to get you to ring that little doorbell so you can get notified when there's an incredible tea time going up and you can join the live stream leave your questions your comments and all that good stuff with miss liz if you'd like to stay anonymous you can send miss liz direct questions in my dm on my facebook page or my linkedin page all of the pages that you see that we're streaming to right now you can send me private messages and i will get those questions out to laura as i know some of you like to stay hidden in behind the scenes and that's okay we accept that here so let's get started with the disclaimer and some bio and then let's get laura in here and we're going to spill a second tea with the science of empowerment that's right we're going to talk empowerment and science and all that good stuff today with laura uh, so disclaimer for Miss Liz's Tea Time Live show. Miss Liz myself is going live using StreamYard. Before leaving a comment, please grant StreamYard permission to see your name at StreamYard.com. Please be advised that the content brought forward for any Tea Time show hosted by myself, Miss Liz, is always brought forward in good faith. However, may bring forth dialogues and opinions that are not representative of my platform. The facts and information are perceived to be accurate at the giving time of airing. All tea time guests and audience participants are responsible for using their good judgment and taking any action that may relate to the discussion. The content brought forward may include discussions for some where they may be emotionally at risk. It's significant to know that this show is engaging in discussion forms only to offer and inspire awareness and connection and is not providing therapeutic advice. If you have any questions about the disclaimer or the panelist discussion, you may freely contact me, Miss Liz, through my email at bookingmissliz at gmail.com. Moving forward, should you choose to voluntarily participate in today's show in any aspect, I, Miss Liz, welcomes you. And should you decide that the show is not made for you at this time, I respect those wishes and we'll see you at a later show at a later date and time. And again, all Tea Time shows, the original dates are Thursday, so 3 p.m., 7 p.m. If you see a Tea Team tea time on monday tuesday wednesday it is a schedule rescheduled tea time a surprise tea time or a surprise tea time or a special tea time that there we go miss liz's tongue is getting all confused again here we go so now a little bit about laura well who is laura well first off laura this is her second time coming to tea time and i'm really honored to have her back uh the last time we had a tea time she was on season four you can go and check that tea time out as well in the playlist of season four so Laura Brennan Ballad is the author of The Science of Empowerment. Laura is driven by life force that circulates within all university, universal connectivity. Her passion, inspirational teachings, and her ability to see how energy is in everything guides her powerful message messaging forward. When you are in the connection with Laura, you feel the charge and the movement of energy in real time. You become excited about your exploitation, ex, explorations into, into an empowered life. This energy comes alive and sparks an awareness within uplifting thoughts and purpose for the observer. Laura's energetic ability through her words to activate within the listeners, this personal knowing that you are living potentially is inspiring. As an ambassador of life empowerment, a global top selling author, a new thought creator and speaker, a neural energy facilitator, and a life transformational empowerment coach, and a global mindset energy coach for Zelo Studios. Laura explore, Exploration into the Awakening of Human to Human Connectivity, Personal and Professional Healer, 
development and co-creator relationship with her community is an is at the foundation of her mission. If you want to read all of Laura's full bio, you can go over to Miss Liz's Facebook page and you can check that out and you can connect with Laura. So let me get Laura in here and let's spill some tea. Welcome, Laura. Hello, Miss Liz. It is so nice to see you again. And we were having such a good talk in the back and it's like, yeah. oh, it says showtime. We got to go. <laughs> I know. And aren't those talks amazing? Like you wish that you were recording and going live when you start having those conversations because they're just so authentic. Yeah. And we, we are really real on um, authenticity. And we talked about that the last time when you were on Tea Time. But Laura, I'm going to take you back again. You know how this works. So who is Laura as a little girl and who's Laura now? Yeah, um, I, I'm pretty much the same kid. <laughs> I haven't changed too much. Uh, if you meet people that knew me when I was younger, uh, whether it's a teacher or a coach or a classmate, and those of my friends that have stayed with me all the way through, um, I'm pretty much the same kid. Full of energy, lots of high energy, can't really sit still, always have a new th thinking process going on always wanted to empower the world. It's something my brother and I talk about all the time. We remember being little kids, thinking we were superheroes. We grew up in that era of, you know, Batman and Spider-Man and all of it. We have been known to like pull mattresses off our beds and jump off the roof <laughs> in our house. Um, just fun, lots of energy, uh, self-exploration into what I now as an adult would call human potentiality. But as a kid, it was that beautiful, raw curiosity. Um, and we had this innate courage, right, to go into that environment of being curious. We weren't afraid. Um, and I, so I try to really hold on to that energy now, uh, as you know, you speak around the world and you are interviewed and you create these incredible conversations and you collaborate, you want to remind each other that, um, we're brilliant. We're genius. We're super cool kids. We're just in growing up, you know, kind of responsibilities, but that, that nature of, I think, living an empowered life, being curious, having the courage to really set the world on fire in the best of ways, the energy of fire. Um, we shouldn't lose it. We shouldn't lose it. And I think it goes right back to our conversation we were having before we went live, right? Is today's world, right? Yeah. Children, curiosity. Are kids curious anymore? I, I don't think so. Um, not the way I... Well, all right. So there's right. Uh, there's always two parts, right, uh, to the answer there. I'm sure they are, but it appears that they're less curious. There's a bit more fear instilled, or there seems to be a lack of confidence. Or if they aren't with a group that's already doing it, they don't necessarily feel like they're aligned with their individuality. So. I don't know, like that differentiation marker just doesn't seem to be there. You know, when we were, I guess, growing up, it was the cool thing to be a bit of an outlier, dress a little different, wear your hair a little different, you know, introduce some new music or whatever it may be to your friends, your group, your community, a classroom. Uh, they're just as much as I think we want to think that we're inclusive. I still feel like we're not. It yeah. felt more inclusive when we were kids because there was a natural flow to it. There wasn't all these rules and restrictions or these guidelines to how you can be part of the group. Um, and I, I, I hope that if there is youth listening, that they really do begin to explore what curiosity can mean for them. And there's no right or wrong. It's just get curious about who you are, who you are becoming, and who you can choose to become. Uh, and certainly not at the directive of anyone else outside. You know, as we were talking before, become a self-thinking individual and really exercise and really almost authorize, right, your own empowerment. Absolutely. And it goes right back to empowerment, right? Because a lot of people don't understand what empowerment really is. Right. You know, they, they look at it as a control word, as a title word, as a leader word. But empowerment is really yourself, right? Understanding yourself and getting deep within. And, and when I first talked to you last season about the science of empowerment, we talked about this, right? Is the root within ourselves, yeah. right? 
what we're what we're bringing to the table, what we're serving. Are we bringing what others want us to bring to the table, or are we actually bringing our authentic selves to the table? Right. And we talked about that right the last time. Uh, I want to get into the book because the book you have it on the black, and you have the science of empowerment, and you have the green and the yellows and all that. We talked about this on season four about the colors of the cover of your book and the title. So let's get into that a little bit, Laura. Yeah, again, I think so many of us, we lose our connection to energy. Uh, we don't understand on a fundamental basis that energy is in everything, literally everything. So even a desk, a microphone, you know, the walls, the artwork, the chair you're sitting on, it's in everything. And then we look at it, it's in color, it's in our branding, it's in the very essence of how we express who we are. So my brother, uh, Christopher, I always give a heart felt acknowledgement to uh, Christopher. He is the creator of the J3 equals E formula. And that is really what sparked me to take five years of my life and create the science of empowerment. So again, back to siblings, we were always thinking we were super cool. We had power. We just didn't know quite how to tap into it. And then we just figured out our own way of being in the world. And we wanted to create a message that would empower the world. My brother went off into the world of gymnastics coaching. He is a former USA gymnastics coach. He has worked with Olympians and champions all over the world, and he's had a really unique experience with that. Me, at heart, I'm a writer. I'm a storyteller. I believe in the power of language and the energy behind the words. And so the science of empowerment is really about the alchemy of the magic of the universe. You can look at it through God, you you know, you can look at it through universal consciousness spirit. It does not matter. It's you as an individual tapping into the power of your potential and how you can rise into this existence that actually empowers I n your life so we can then empower EM, the rest of the world. And it's two different things, but right, they're the same coin. They're just two sides of that coin. To empower oneself is not an act of being, you know, um, selfish. It's not an act of conceit. It's not an egoic way of being in the world. For me, it's actually quite the opposite. It's taking time to be reflective, to have the, the moment of bravery to stand upon that hill and claim it for yourself. How can I arrive to my genius state of being while I'm in the human condition? And so the science of empowerment and the colors and the branding and everything represents something of high energy. Um, there's a halo above and below uh, the science of empowerment that represents our parents. The formula that is called the Jekyll formula, that is five principles. The reason why it's named Jekyll, J-E-K-L, is that is a representation of four of the very most important people in my brother's lives. Uh, one of them um, represents two of his best friends, the J. The E is the very first person that took the program. The K is our cousin who, you know, we feel like we've traveled eons with him. And the L is for his sister, Laura, that's me. And then the halo is our mom and dad, again, representing and encompassing uh, family, community, unity, of how can we take a message and create something that really elevates the collective? Um, and so, and again, the colors, the actual Jekyll green color that's on the book and on the branding my brother created. So very unique ways of looking at everything that wasn't haphazard. It was very well thought out. How can we spark or ignite energy when someone looks at the book, looks at the cover, not just the wording, but the, the way it was put together together uh, so that it it actually opens and expands the readership before they even begin to read the book. Well, I really, what I got from the book when I first got, when you first reached out to me last year is the, the roots of the, and the community, right? The family, like, like you've just shared, like yeah. the bottom, the black is the ground, yeah. right? And yeah. then the roots and the trees and growing and the sunlight and, and, 
the energies, right? The energies of natural light that we take advantage of so much in life, um, you know, and what we take advantage of is family a lot of mm. times as well, right? And today in Canada, it's Thanksgiving Day. And I, and I am a big believer that we should be giving thanks every day. Yes, we have these holidays, but let's not forget about giving thanks to our family and community mm. all of the time. You know, why do we need a special day or a special campaign to say like, okay, today we give thanks, mm -hmm. we give grace, you know, let's just keep it real all the time. 365 days of the year, 366 when it's leap year, right? Like, you know, uh, yeah. but I, that's what I got from your book, Laura, when I first connected with you last year, right? Is the community of growing together yeah. and the colors. Mm -hmm. And I, we have a question here about branding. What? your branding speaks of community and family do certain colors uh, resonate let me word this right so this person mm -hmm. the colors that you have for your branding do they resonate as an outsource of connecting with community as well yeah what a great question and this is the again the beauty of why i created the science of empowerment and mind development the way that I did. So that question is so self-reflective and so empowering to the person asking that question, right? Because this is about how they are feeling and thinking when they look at the book. So even if I say a specific answer, they already are picking up on something that's resonating and aligning with them so that they feel more empowered. And so, yes, again, the, every single aspect of what we did and continue to do at the Science of Empowerment is based from the vantage point of, is this going to empower us first? And why I say this again to reinforce what I was saying before. If I am not empowered authentically, if I have not explored and discovered what that means to me, how can I speak? How can I coach? How can I give that guidance to someone else? Now, there's nothing wrong with reading material, taking in that information, but in order to recalibrate information into knowledge, there has to be an authentic authentic exploration or discovery or journey, right? And we can go down so many, you know, examples of this, whether you go through the hero's journey, whether you go down the rabbit hole, whatever it may be to you, it is important to look at your life as a mechanism of growth, not only for yourself, and I sometimes think as importantly as for each other. So back to, yes, community begins within, right? We have a community within our mind, our body, our consciousness, our cellular makeup. There's a coherence that, that needs to be addressed so that how we are unifying and communicating our own evolution now, again, can show up fully and people recognize that. They understand, oh, this isn't just a book or this isn't just a coaching program or this isn't just a speaking engagement or a podcast that I'm showing up in. I'm participating in my own elevation because the people that I'm listening to and connecting with, this is behind their mission. It's a passion of of really true elevation on a collective uh, level. So I know, you know, I have my own unique vernacular, but I hope that that hits the spot to uh, what they were asking. And we have another question here for you, Laura. What is self-evaluation self levels? Yeah, so this is self-evolution, right? And now we go back to, you know, we evolve, right? As, spe as a species, as a nation, as uh, a world, right? Um, even the planet, we're always evolving. And what happens is when we stop evolving, right, we, we, almost move into this comfort zone of stagnation. We don't want that. We constantly want to be evolving. And that comes through, again, self-reflection, through growth, through advancement, through empowering our lives. How can we evolve 
every day. And as you said, and it's these are the synchronicities that I love to bring forth to the listening audience. I just wrote an article this morning for a magazine about reflection and celebration. It would be published in uh, December going into the new year. And I was writing about that. Why are we waiting to celebrate only when it's deemed necessary, i.e. a holiday or a birthday? Why are we not celebrating every day? What would it be like if when we were kids and it was kind of seeded into the mindset that it is our birthright to celebrate one thing every day? Like it would feel foreign if we did not celebrate something. And it could be very simple. It could be the warmth of the sun. It could be a walk. It be, could be just saying hello to a stranger. It could be you have a great teacher in fourth grade. It could be playing on the you know swing set with someone. It, it doesn't have to be these big earth shattering experiences. Celebration can come through reflection. And this is how we evolve the self. This constant, beautiful movement of energy of who am I, who was I, and who am I becoming? And so this is really at the foundation of the science of empowerment, this consistent movement of not staying stagnant, always evolving, always elevating and growing, advancing who I am and how I contribute to the collective because everything we do ripples into everything everyone else is doing. Yeah, absolutely. And and, and it goes right back to what I just said about Thanksgiving, right? Why do we have to wait for a, a holiday to say thanks to everybody and thanks to my community and thanks to my partner and, you know, I mean, just not wake up and look over and say, thanks for being here. Like, you know, yeah. like yeah. have gratitude and, you know, and celebrate the little wins. Like, and it doesn't have to be an important award or recognition or, mm -hmm. or stuff like that. It could be, you know what? You put your hand in a, in a popsicle box and you really wanted the orange popsicle, not the red one. And you pulled out the orange and you're like, yeah, I got yeah. the orange popsicle, right? We should be celebrating the little things in life. And that's such a beautiful example and sharing of the simplicity, yet the power of what that can do for us on a daily, consistent basis. It changes everything. It changes your mindset, your attitude, your level of confidence. It changes your gratitude and appreciation. And it really begins to up-level your compassion for one another. Because when you start to engage in the beauty and the power of celebrating the smaller things, you then appreciate that someone else is doing the same. And if they aren't doing it, then you can be that walking example of what it is. And this is why the power of just saying hello and offering a smile or when you're you know, at a checkout line and you know that the person at the cash register, you could just tell, right? They're not wanting to be there. They're frustrated. They've got issues. You know, you offer them something, laughter, a moment of conversation. You help bag the groceries. You say, thank you. They, they look at you like, you're, you know, almost like foreign, like you're an alien. <laughs> right. You <laughs> just said a word. Thank you. In today's society, people are like, yeah. But I didn't do it. Really, like, why it, are you it, saying thank you? Like, I know, I know. It's so important. And it's, it's again, shaking someone's hand, holding the door open. You know, so many people look at this as, oh, that's old fashioned, or we don't have that tradition built into the system anymore. And this is why we are going through what we're going through. It is really about, again, self-evolution comes from deep compassion for oneself, which really ultimately has beautiful effect on compassion for everyone else around us. And when we think about ourselves in the eyes and the presence of another, this is how we really begin to create a world that's empowered. We have a personal question here for you, Laura. So I don't know how you're going to answer this, but I'm going to ask you, Laura, how old were you when you had your awakening of empowerment? Yeah, uh, young. Um, but I would say when I came into the consciousness of it or the awareness of it uh, between 12 and 14. But even as a young girl, I remember uh, being very little. Um, and, you know, this is really full transparency. Um, I remember feeling the rays of the sun differently. 
uh, I remember smelling a flower, uh, a blade of grass, almost as if I was returning back in to feeling the sensory of humanness. Um, but I, I didn't know how to articulate it. I, you know, I didn't know how to educate myself in the process of what I was thinking and experiencing, but I was young and I really, at 14, I, I accelerated, um, all of it at 14. I just love how my audience comes and asks these questions and then yes, they're like, Mrs. Well, will you ask? It's a personal question. I'm just, I can word it in a different way. You know, sometimes they send a question in and I'm just like, uh, no, I'm not going to ask it that way. I'll, 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 no. I'll I can, I can absolutely handle any question as long as it has, you know, kindness at its base, uh, which of course it would with the listening audience that you've cultivated, but yeah, a young age. And I think most of us had, a moment where we tapped into this knowing, but it was very fleeting and it's because of, and then we can yeah. fill in many blanks. Uh, some of us had abusive childhoods. We were neglected, abandoned, you know, alcoholism, drugs, sexual abuse, all of what we know that the world can bring upon us. And then for some of us, we just had parents that were, you know, really hardworking and very distant and had to kind of stay with the grind. We didn't have the connections that we needed to really nurture that, again, that curiosity. Why am I here? How come I feel this way? Am I different or am I the same? Why do I look at, you know, uh, something in a more unique way than my friend does? Um, but we all go through this even as adults, right? We can walk into a museum or we can walk in a local park. And, you know, those of us that look at the, the sounds differently, the way we hear, the way we see, we can really be moved quite easily. And then there's other people that you can just tell or just kind of, hanging through the day and it's not really having any high impact on them. And again, neither example is right or wrong. It is where we are in the moment of our own evolution. But when we tap into that awareness to empower our experiences, so we empower the world, it all begins to shift then. Yeah. Well, it comes, it comes right down to, on your website, it says negative, positive, or neutral. Who are you? Right. Yeah. And it goes back to the generational cycles and the lifestyle and childhood that we had. Right. Uh, you know, a lot of us become speakers because we didn't have a voice as a child. Uh, a lot of us become advocates because we want change in the world. Uh, you know, these are different things that we look at. And yes, we all have a negative side and we all have a positive side, but we also have that neutral side where we have to take that time to pause right? Absolutely. And, and that's what I get with the science of empowerment is take the pause, pause yeah. before you go left or right, <laughs> you know, say yes or no. And it's okay to say no. And I love that. What a be beautiful observation. Uh, and yes, so when we looked at negative, you know, my brother and I love the quantum studies, right? Really quantum, looking into all that is possible, right? From the smallest, smallest of particles, all the way to the expansion of, of our world and everything that consists uh, within it. But asking oneself, negative, positive, or neutral, which one am I? When you start to ask yourself that question, within every interaction, you position yourself into what I've really coined around the world when I talk about this, into the power seat of choice. You now no longer are blaming outside influences or past events for your present self. You are standing into your accountability really exercising and authorizing that level of empowerment where I am asking, which energy structure am I? Negative, positive, or neutral? And when you answer that, now you start to bring into right the environment of awareness, what am I contributing? What am I participating in? What energy am I infusing into this interaction? And is it benefiting both of us? And is it benefiting the world around us? And when we're negative, no, never. It, it just, it can't. The energies don't align with that. Now, positivity can be a bit of a leap for many of us because we are either still very tethered or anchored into past, 
We're too concerned, worried, and stressed about the future. So our present state of being, it gets a little skewed. And this is the power, and I love this, of neutrality. My brother and I talked about placing this within the formula so that you have a resting ridge. And as my friend Laura Katanen says at ZLO Studio, where I coach the Courageous Leadership Program, we call it the compassionate pause. This is a moment. So when we're interacting, we'll use a quick example. You're having an argument with um, a spouse, a partner, a sibling, someone at work, whatever it may be. And you start to ask yourself, negative, positive, neutral, which one am I? We're not even thinking of the other person. Which one am I? Well, I'm being negative because I'm interacting with this argument. I've been here before. It's it, This is just a continuing of a pattern. Okay. Let me neutralize this immediately. It can be a physical step back. It could be a pause in the argument. You know what, Liz? This isn't working for me. Let me just take a moment. Let me just catch my breath. And let's see if we can recalibrate the conversation differently so that we actually can move on. We can grow and advance this pattern rather than just staying in the quagmire of it. Now, a lot of times when that happens, the other person gets defensive. The other person locks into that pattern because they don't have a skill or a tool or an awareness to it. That's okay. You let them deal with what they need to. But now you start to honor that part of you that recognizes the pattern, no longer accepts the pattern. And now we get to move into the formula. And very quickly, this is where we bring awareness in. Then we ask ourselves, what are we willing to do? I'm willing to neutralize the negativity. What does that do? That activates the third principle of the J3 equals formula. This is accountability. Now I'm starting to be accountable for what I am doing, not only to myself, to another human being. And now together we're causing this ripple energetic effect out into the world. And yes, it matters. Trust me, what you and I do together absolutely has direct causation on what everyone else is thinking and feeling. Not consciously, of course, but it's there. Now, when we have looked at my awareness into a pattern, my willingness to shift it, my accountability to stop blaming and take on that empowered choice. Now I move into the fourth principle, which is um, critical thinking. This is a very important principle to adhere to. What this does is it allows us the compassionate pause. It allows us the resting ridge. We get to take a break. We just gently push aside the emotionality, which is the charge in the pattern. And we start to think with a more higher level thought process. Now we start to tap into that genius, that brilliant part of ourselves that maybe has never been given space to. How can I think with higher intelligence in order to recalibrate this pattern? So number one, it's not repeated. And number two, I can evolve and grow and get past it. Now we move into the fifth principle, energy right? Negative, positive, neutral. Which one are you? Well, now you start to realize, wow, within a few seconds, I was able to take a pattern, a negative pattern. I was able to neutralize it through my awareness, my willingness, my accountability, critical thinking, and understanding that I and I alone have direct causation on whatever energy I choose to be and become. Now I want to choose neutral at all interactions. That's my starting point now. Neutral, neutrality. Then I will begin to move into the positive structure of how to be. And so now when we're starting from neutrality, positivity is not that far away anymore. Now we start building on skills and experiences of how we can lessen negativity, hold steady neutrality, and experience more positive interactions every day. And for me, um, I have very little bit of negativity in my life anywhere ever uh, because I bring in the field of neutrality all the time. And so to move from there up to positivity is just such a breeze. And it's an honest, it's a sheer joy. Well, it's almost like taking a step back, right? Taking that pause. 
Yeah. You know, you start with neutral, then you get to positive, then you get to negative. But you know, when you get to positive, you really don't want to get to the negative, right? So you want you you don't want to keep stepping backwards. You want to yeah. take maybe one step back, three steps forward. You know what I mean? Kind of like a dance, right? Like a jig yes. job, like you know. Uh, and it goes right back to the heroes, superheroes as children, right? Yeah. I, all the superheroes, they want they don't want patterns to repeat. They want to take the bad stuff out and bring good. Right. There's always a, a happy ending in the stories of the superheroes. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it's like Spider-Man. He puts the web on. Right. And he he feels the safety of the walls and, and, and that as he's flying and believing in himself. It's a self empowerment of one another. Right. That we got to really start getting right back to. And it starts within ourselves, uh, oh, you know, and and it doesn't matter what age you are, if you're 10 or you're 99, you know, you can learn this. You can take those steps back. You, it's a, you know, we can change the pattern. We don't have to follow the pattern. I have a client that's um, 65 and she somehow found the book out in the world and then reached out to me via the website and said, you know, I need coaching. I want, I want to be coached privately on this material. And uh, right from the beginning, the first uh, hour, she, she was crying and she said, had I had this book, my entire life would have been different. Now, I could respond to that in a very specific way. But what did I do? Right into the principles. Okay, what are you aware of in this moment? Because she was settling into that feeling of past pains and past hurts, right? So I said, what are you willing to do? And then, you know, we started going through and she understood to keep releasing, keep letting go, because I didn't have the book back then. I went through those experiences. And sometimes, even though some can be incredibly tragic, we can see how it may be added to who we have become had we not gone through those trials and tribulations. Then she said accountability in the moment. Let me neutralize my thought process. Let me neutralize the feelings that are being stirred up, the sensations that I'm feeling based on the past because I'm here in the present with my coach talking about a book that changed my life. Now we went into critical thinking and she said, right, emotionality. I didn't have it, but I have it now. And now at 65 years old, I can actually say, I am changing. I am evolving. I am becoming an empowered individual that will now allow me to empower my community. Boom, negative, positive, neutral. Which energy am I? She asked of herself and she knew. I neutralized the thought process that I've kept for decades. I now know how to shift it within moments to continue to consistently break free from all of what kept her from feeling the way she now feels. So you're right, it doesn't matter. Uh, that's a story for that end, right, of the age spectrum. Very quickly, we have a very young group of gymnast, uh, gymnasts training. They want to go big, they want to perform on the Olympic level. So you have to start training them very young. We have this one girl, She, uh, I love her, Brooklyn. She lets me use her name and her story. She used to come into the training facility bad mood, <laughs> bad energy all the time. We started talking about negative, positive, neutral, all the principles, the Jekyll formula, everything's up all around the center. One day she came in and I caught her right before she walked into what we call the cage. It's all, uh, you know, um, selected off from the other training part of the facility. And I said, Brooklyn, what's up? Negative, positive, neutral. Come on, girl power. Let's go. Remember, Girl power, you are in the power seat of choice. She was seven years old at the time. I said, you are in the power seat of choice. Three times. She said, hold on, coach. She walks out the door and her parents knew. She comes back in, different attitude, smile on her face. You could feel ready to go. I said, what shifted? My mindset. I said, what'd you do? I left negative Bob outside and Brooklyn is in the house. And I've never forgotten this. This was years ago. She's now, I don't know, 12, 13 years old. She still trains at the facility with my brother. We still mindset coach. This is the power of information, taking it in, gaining insight and wisdom and knowledge 
all on your own. So when you read the science of empowerment, it doesn't tell you who to be, how to become it. It's written in a way where when you're reading it, you begin to realize you are just magnificent. You are special. You are unique. You are empowered. You are empowerment in action. It's just a matter of when you decide to align with it and own it and then step out into it. And that's really, uh, there's no age on that. There really isn't. And I personally can speak again with such authenticity with clients, whether they're in the training facility or private uh, coaching clients, as well as when I do, you know, group speaking engagements and there's a vulnerability, but we all know it's a safe space to start talking about that. And there is no room for embarrassment. There's nothing to be embarrassed about whether you get it at seven and you forget it at 14 and then you reconnect to it back at 21 and then you forget it till you're 47. It doesn't matter. The beauty and the power is in the remembrance of it. And consistently tuning back into that part of you that knows differently than what you are presently settling for. This is the act of self-evolution, which is living an empowered life. I, I, you know, Laura, I really enjoyed this conversation with you because, you know, it's being real with ourselves, yeah. you know, coming right back to the real cup of tea, coming back to who we really are. Uh, I want to get into your tea uh, the, the three words that you gave me was transformational, uh, empowerment and activation. And I think that goes a little bit into what you're saying with Brooke, right? Is leaving the ne negative Bob out there and then coming in and saying, Hey, Brooke's in the house. You know, yeah. we got to start doing that. We got to start coming in and saying, look at Laura's in the house. Miss Liz is in the house, yes. you know, and being proud of ourselves, uh, you know, because we all bring something different to the table. We all bring our own true authentic selves to the table when we're really real with ourselves. Right. And it's okay to say, you know what, that little negative guy, he had to stay in the hallway for a while. He had a timeout. Like, you know, we have to give some time out sometimes. Uh, so tell me why you gave me those three words, Laura. Yeah. So what's funny is um, I didn't remember the three words. So I thought like now in present time, if I were to come up with three new words, like what, what would be the, uh, again, that differentiation in there. So I actually mm -hmm. came up with thought energy for my T. I came up with empowerment expansion for my E. And I came up with awareness accountability for my A. So of course, because as I said, from a little girl to a growing up woman, I was always pretty much this way. And so if you look at my fourth year episode and my fifth year episode, it's still all around that, but it has shifted a little bit, right? And so I think if I if I'm so allowed to stay within these this new cup of tea, thought energy has become something that I really am mentoring others on. I, kind of become known around the globe as a specialist in this way of thinking. And this is really about becoming the architect of thought itself. So we start to position ourselves in that power seat of choice as to how can I design my thinking so that I am always empowering myself and empowering someone else. And it's such a beautiful, for me, way to be in this world, because I'm honoring my humanness, while I'm acknowledging the compassion of your humanness. And together, we're going to begin to have this beautiful exchange of energy through the way that we think. Now, there's some people that go more based on feeling first and thought, but I've always had a thought before I had a feeling. Uh, that's just me. And so this is how I share, I, I share, right? Thought energy. We're always thinking something and then immediately there's a sensation or a feeling connected to that thought process. So I think really becoming the architect of how we think is a really cool way to look at it and knowing, and you can look at it in any way that you want, you know, uh, creating a dance, choreography, um, engineering through a blueprint, gardening and how you, you know, plant the seeds. There's so many unique ways that each individual can hear this knowledge and take it in for themselves and apply it. And when we look at uh, the E in the cup of tea, this is really about empowerment expansion. And I'm myself moving into this next level of advancement through thought energy. How do we expand empowerment? 
And that is through thought energy. It is through tuning into the feeling and the sensation. It's going back into that curious childlike nature and becoming confident to how we explore and discover our own place within the human condition. And then the A for me in uh, the cup of tea is awareness, accountability. Not separate, awareness, accountability. When we are aware of something, that's beautiful. Many of us are aware of many things, but we are, do not hold ourselves accountable to what we are aware of. We go right into that blame or that judgment, or we, we kind of uh, reactivate our lack of confidence within what we're aware of. No, I want you to be empowered. That awareness is really activating accountability. And when you become an accountable human being, now you get to evolve all interactions, all response systems, because you are thinking with intelligence rather than reacting from emotionality. And a side note, emotion is at the base of our humanity. It is important to be emotional, but not at, mm, let's say, at the fault of our growth. So yes, feel emotion, you know, all spectrums of it, love, hate, high, low, happy, sad, you have to, the contrast is, hold such beauty, but don't get anchored into the negative emotion. Use it to propel you into that neutrality, right, space, and then move up into that, that level of uh, really true positive mindset, positive emotion. Uh, the art of recalibration and the mastery is something I study daily. Really, when we, we get triggered and we move back into a place where we were hurt, we were abused, we were abandoned, we were neglected, we all can go back there pretty fast. The key is not to stay in it the same way that we once did. And this is where all of the science of empowerment, the J3 equals E formula, really becomes a living energy formula and allows us to really move into, um, again, a life of empowerment so we may empower one another. And I repeat that so often because I want the listening audience to own that experience of empowerment. It's your birthright. It You deserve it. It belongs to you. Authorize it. Green light it. Do what you have to do to know that you are an empowered human being. And it is our collective accountability and responsibility to empower each other um, as often as possible. So that's my cup of tea. <laughs> I, I really love that you changed your tea. You know why? Because it goes right back to your three words that you originally gave me. But I want my listeners and audience to understand that the tea within ourselves changes every single day, every single moment. You might say, you know what? I want transformation empowerment action today and wake up and say, you know what? I don't want transformation today. I'm just having a slow day, but it's going to take some extra steps, right? And I love that my guests changed their teas on the spot because you're being authentic with yourself, Laura, and Absolutely. you're, and you're showing that change is okay, you know, and yeah. you know, as individuals, we have to be okay with saying, you know what, I came in with this attitude, and it goes right back to Brooke's story, right? I come in with this bad attitude. I leave, yeah. I go talk to the negative Bob. I come yeah. back in and I say, you know what? I'm in the house, you know? Yeah. And that's what the Laura just did. Laura was like, you know what? I, I'm not feeling this tea that Miss Liz is saying that I gave, you know? Yeah, it's important. It's important because it goes all together. It all. Yeah. And I think this is, again, this is really the, the beauty of living in the, the, the kind of the atmosphere and the environment of creating an empowered life. We understand. Technology likes to come in when Miss Liz is getting connected and really strong and empowering and comes with a strong message. And we get these little wormholes that come keep coming in. Don't worry. We are still here. Laura is still here. Miss Liz is yes. still here. Do not worry about technology little issues because you know what? There's fault in everything. There's fault in all systems. And we have to be okay with saying, you know what? How can I fix it? Right. I continue on. Right. right. I neutralize on. that wormhole. That wormhole was trying to take Miss Liz out. And Miss Liz is like, I'm not giving up. I'm still staying. No right? way. And that's what Laura does. We just 
okay. We, we still connect and we still show up as our authentic selves. Um, you know, and I really want to get into the framework and we're time is running really fast with us yeah. as when we have good conversations, we find the time just flies, but yeah. I want to get into the framework, the four R's, um, the reconnect, realize, reimagine and re-energize. Let's talk about the framework of life because we all have all of those fours in us. Right. So really quickly, this is uh, part of the program that my friend Laura Katanen created for ZLO Studio, specifically for the Courageous Leadership Program. And a very unique side note is as a global top selling author and a thought energy specialist and all of the accolades and designations I have, I took the time to go through this program as a coach. And then I took the time to get certified in her program as well outside completely of mine. And so many people have asked me, why would you get certified in someone else's program? And it's because that 4R system within the Courageous Leadership Program, it really sets a foundation like the J3 equals E. It gives you connection points right? Whether you are reconnecting with something, whether you are realizing something, whether you begin to reimagine something, and then you re-energize yourself. It's such a beautiful system and a simplistic way of helping us evolve and elevate our mindset energy, which ZLO Studio is really known for. So it was just another add-in. So if someone's thinking about awareness and willingness, and then they're thinking about reimagining and re-energizing, this is to let you know that collect as much information as you can in the world. It's an open library. It's a universal library at our fingertips. And what I have, again, coined in the science of empowerment, I've termed creating an internal living library. Information is just information, but when you actually apply it, it becomes knowledge. And then this knowledge gains momentum and becomes wisdom. And now you have some credit to how you're sharing out in the world. And that could mean as a parent to your child, right? Do not, uh, what was that saying way back in the day? Um, do as I say, not as I do, right? That doesn't wash anymore. We have to be able to show up and say, I also am doing what I am speaking on. I am living this formula. I am applying this empowerment educational system so I may empower the listening audience. I'm not just speaking it. I'm re-energizing information to become knowledge so you can actually take these words and take this podcast and take this conversation and do something amazing for yourself and others with it. I really like it because, you know, this conversation, having open discussions with people and individuals like yourself, Laura, opens new avenues, opens yeah. new opportunities, opens new connections, opens new community. It goes right back to the beginning of our conversation, right? Is the science of empowerment, the community of growing together, you know, yeah. taking that pause and taking that green light. Like it's, it's all in the branding colors as well as of the book yeah. and the platform and everything is, you know, that pause, that compassionate pause is the yellow. The green is the go, you know, yeah. and the black is like, oh, that's a negative guy. We got to just hold on, but we got to keep pushing. And it's like a naggy parent, right? Like a parent that says, no, I think you did and then that, you know, that think should have, would have, could have. And yeah. we're those teenage kids. And you know what? I don't want to do it that way. We right. want to grow our own roots. We want to grow our own ways and branches, right? And that's what the science of empowerment does is start to empower yourself so you can empower. You know, I really love that we have these two words and that we have this platform and this conversation going because we have a lot of listeners that are out there and they're just like blown away because Miss Liz is so passionate right now. And I'm just like, yeah, I want that orange popsicle, guys. I'm going to get the orange popsicle today. <laughs> and, you know, um, but Laura, I really enjoy having a heart to heart conversation with you. Yeah, me too. Because you bring in, you bring in the connection of the root of how it all started, right? And it all starts within ourselves, that seed that we plant. Mm -hmm. And the seed of plant of community starts with our parents, starts with our homes, starts with our childhood. You know, uh, what message would you like to leave everybody with today about the science of empowerment? Uh, and, and we're really going to encourage everybody over to check out season four with Laura. So you get a double dose of science. 
empowerment. But what message would you like to leave everybody with, Laura? Yeah, thank you. Well, first, I just want to honor you and all the work that you do for not only your community, but all of our communities and and taking time to have a cup of tea with individuals. I think it's such a magical experience and nothing that I take for granted. It's um, it's just an honor. So thank you uh, for your time um, sharing today with me. And the message is very simple. Empower yourself to empower the world. And don't ever question your place in it. You are magic. You are special. You are unique. You are needed. You are a gift. And whatever those outside circumstances are in this present moment, you have the potential and the ability to shift it all. I'm not saying it'll happen in a moment, but it can throughout your lifetime change everything for you. Believe in yourself. Have the curiosity to go beyond the present situation. Have the courage to make the changes that are needed and find something every day that empowers your place in this world and find a way every day to empower someone else's life. So Laura, do you have any upcoming events or new books or any of the workshops that uh, you have yeah. coming up? I'm working on a lot of things and thank you. I actually have, believe it or not, I have about five books that are already started, but everything is on hold. I am really working on building up my coaching business even more now because the speaking engagements are coming in and group coaching um, and really moving into professional like mindset development within corporations, but small and private. Um, I, 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 I just love it. And I do something very unique um, that I've, I offer my podcast host. I offer anyone that buys the book. If there's a group of people that purchase the book together, like just, it could be three friends or it could be 30 people. Uh, I had a gentleman that was the president of one of our largest insurance companies here in the USA. And uh, he bought 30 books and I showed up and we had a live Q and A and it was phenomenal. And it sparked the idea in me to have people read the book and bring questions to the author and how we can show what a real live empowerment coaching session looks like and how it can truly support and activate each person feeling confident in their own way of empowering their family members, their sibling relationships, their work environments. Uh, so I, I love doing that. But speaking engagements, virtual right now, I've got a couple things uh, traveling that are happening, um, really focusing on the science of empowerment. It just has such great momentum. I've moved past my 100th episode now. Um, my goal is to do 200 at the end of the year, 100 every year, because I just love meeting the most amazing host of these communities where really uh, the, the, the drive, the passion, the mission is to empower and uplift and inspire uh, the world. So you can find me on the website. There's an area to reach out to me. Uh, the book is on Amazon. Um, even if you order the book on Amazon, you can go back to the website and there's a box that you can message me. I read them all myself. I answer them. Um, I just love connecting. I now have been moved into published uh, writing for articles. Um, I'm on my third magazine, my second article for all three magazines. They've asked me back. So just really sharing the way that I look at thought energy and how to continue to empower my life, to empower the listening audience. And that's what I'm doing. So thank you for the opportunity. Oh, well, you're very welcome. And thank you for coming back. I always love when my guests come back because oh, yeah. that means that they enjoyed themselves the first time. Yeah. Uh, could you just spell out your website for all the audio listeners out there? Yes. Thank you. www.thescienceofempowerment.com. And there's a media page with podcasts, which this one will be uploaded as well as my YouTube. Oh, something I guess I should say, um, I started a YouTube channel uh, where I host all of the interviews and all the shorts, uh, you know, and the reels and all of that. But I'm going to be um, recording a 20 minute, it's called Elevate in 20. And it's going to be a mini 20 minute masterclass weekly on how to empower yourself to empower the community. And so that's going to be something really unique and it's free. You can tap in, 
and uh, you can go to the Science of Empowerment. Uh, look for Laura Brennan Ballet. It's out there. Sometimes I get mixed in with Greg Braden, which is very, very cool. But um, I'm out there and subscribe and listen and join in. And eventually those free classes, um, podcast episodes will be available, giving back to the community. Awesome. I love it. And I love having you back, Laura. I Thank am you. truly amazed to have you back. Uh, for everybody that would like to know more about Tea Time with Miss Liz, check out Miss Liz's website, www.misslizesteatime.com. There's no S on times. Uh, if you'd like to check out Miss Liz's platforms, you can check out Miss Liz's Tea Times with an S. So Miss Liz does see if you do pay attention. There are reasons that Miss Liz does her crazy stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. and I will be back tomorrow with another returning guest, uh, Ay Ayana Davis, a uh, phenomenal autistic. And we'll be talking about autism uh, diagnosed at a late age uh, as a black woman. So we will be talking about that. And then on Thursday, we have two, remain, uh, two returning couples. And we're going to be doing relationships and int intimacy and sexual enlightenment so we're going to talk about some of that good stuff and then in the evening we have sean bridges joining us and we'll be talking about his new book called the gun barrel uh highway uh he's a thriller and a one million dollar stephen king uh screenwriter so we'll we'll get into all of that stuff so we have some amazing topics that are coming but we want you to check out miss liz's youtube channel give that a little subscribe because when you share these tea times then we share the flow of real tea. And tea is not a beverage. Tea is storytelling and words with Miss Liz. So thank you all for tuning in. Thank you for all your questions, your support. I could not do this without you. And keep in mind that we are going into November soon. So the press release for November's lineup will be coming out soon on the 24th as well. So until then, I will see everybody tomorrow, same time, same place. And we're going to serve tea all over again with another returning guest. Until then, take care and happy Thanksgiving to everybody out there. Make sure that you uh, give grace and gratitude each and every day, not just today. Thank you.